Star Citizen. One of the best MMORPGs that I have ever played. Star Citizen is a sci-fi MMORPG that many consider to be a space sim, where the players can buy ships, explore planets, fight pirates, steal loot, and truly play the way they desire. The game itself has been in development for 14 years and spent well over $644 million while doing so, but it is on a completely different level than any other game in the same genre. In this video, I'll be talking about my experiences with the game and what I believe makes this game great. Choosing a ship for Star Citizen is one of the main aspects in the game, but can be a little tricky as well. Well, as there's tons of ships to choose from that all do different things, some ships transport, fight, smuggle, and salvage, but there are ones that'll do all those things combined. You can even buy ships purely meant to fly around, have ship meets, and take screenshots. These ships can also vary in price anywhere from $30 to $3,000, usually shifting the price based on uniqueness and size, with many more to be added as Star Citizen continues to update. When first starting the game though, you'll have to choose a starting package with a ship. I personally recommend the one with the Cutter or the Mustang Alpha, as both these ships can fight and run some cargo, making both of them able to do a variety of missions, although your starting ship doesn't matter, as they've set the game perfectly where the player can do as they desire, even if you start with nothing but a fighter, you can easily rent a separate ship for a different task, or do missions with the first ship until you can afford a new one. So far, all usable ships can be bought in-game through an in-game currency called Yook. I'd even say the main objective of the game right now is to gain millions of Yook and buy as many ships as possible. I don't believe there's anything wrong with the ships as they've made it counterparts to almost every type. For example, Drake ships tend to be heavy fighters and cargo runners that usually look to be made from a steel-like substance as if they're designed for war. In fact, the Drake series has one of the most expensive ships being added to the game, sitting at a $2,000 price tag. That is a legit aircraft carrier, but for space. Or on the other end, we have Origin series ships meant for pure luxury. In general, these ships are very smooth and painted bright white, with their interiors having beds, shelves, and lights. One of these ships is called the 890 Jump, sitting at a $950 price tag and is literally just a space yacht. Ships and their designs are insanely good in this game, although one gripe I do have is they'll copy and paste the same ship for variants. Sometimes the variant isn't different at all or is worse. Star Citizen has many game loops that help the player earn yuck. Dude, I just got Thanos snapped out of my ship. Like, what is going on? Firstly, we have burst learning missions, usually taking the player to a point in space or a planet where the player will be tasked to eliminate enemies and protect an area. These also allow the player to learn how to shoot and get tons of free loot they'll be able to use in the future. Although a massive issue with these missions is the NPCs are terrible. Most of the time, they'll do nothing and just bot walk in circles, then randomly snap to the player's head, kind of ruining your time if you're playing these missions a lot. Next up, we have bounties, where the player is either tasked to hunt down a player or an NPC. As the player progresses through bounties, they're able to take on harder missions, allowing them to make millions of yuk in a short period of time. Bounties are insanely fun as you're always interacting with the world in a very fast-paced way, although one thing I dislike about bounties is sometimes your target will just ram your ship, making you either become lost in the void of space or instantly blow up and just lose the mission. Oh, oh goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> what a series of events, dude. <laughs> lay down, lay down, lay down. Boys, I'm not going to jail. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. I'm not going to jail. No, Austin, did you just fall out? No, I'm leaving. I'm not going to jail. When progressing further into the game, you're going to be able to also do salvaging. Salvaging is a task where the players hunt down destroyed ships and essentially mine them for their resources through the use of a special ship and a mining laser. Salvaging is currently the freest money in the game, allowing the players to make millions off of basically doing nothing, but it's insanely boring as it takes hours to salvage properly. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with salvaging, and if you have the mental fortitude to do it, then it's great for money. Cargo running has tons of things to do and is one of the most difficult things in the entire game. With cargo running, the player usually has to deliver medical supplies, resources, eggs, and maize from one location to another. When delivering basic supplies and resources, usually they're not worth enough for anyone to bother you unless you're delivering a massive shipload, making it fairly easy. But if you want to make much more yuck, you must deliver weevil eggs and maize. Weevil eggs can be found primarily in ship crashes throughout planets, and maize you can either pick up from black market vendors or special events. A lot of people know this event as Jumptown. Jumptown is a location on the planet Yella that produces maize over time. Every once in a while, the devs host an event there that forces the maze into mass production though, forcing the planet yellow to become a massive battlefield to almost all players in the game. Both maze and weevil eggs are worth thousands to millions of yuk depending on their current quantity, making players smuggling these goods a high target to pirates. Cargo running is one of the most fun things in the game as there's a variety of things that will happen. You will not only move cargo, but you'll also get into a lot of combat and explore almost all of the planets at a constant rate 
making it insanely fun to do cargo running. Pirating has become a slight plague on the game. As the games progress, there are so many things that require the player to cargo run, from mercenary work to salvaging to just delivering goods, making pirates a big part of the game in order to steal everyone's loot. All it takes to be a pirate is the ability to either track or to sit and wait in a common pickup or delivery location, making pirating extremely easy, especially when there is a mass desync and enemies cannot fight back. In fact, a lot of players and content creators have recently started to quit the game because of how easy it is to grind for hours and hours on end to lose everything in only five minutes due to the pirates, especially since there are very little consequences for being a pirate. For example, pirates can obtain a bounty and if caught will be sent to prison for a long period of time, but it's insanely easy to never be caught as NPCs aren't usually good enough to capture players and pirates can easily combat log in the right situation. With that being said, pirating is overall insanely fun for being a pirate as you're basically just standing around and waiting for free loot. Although it is terrible for the current state of the game, as it's forcing more and more players to quit the game or become pirates, lowering the amount of players doing other gameplay loops. I believe if they want to fix this, being a pirate should be more punishing, and they should really strive to fix the desync issues. Outside of these game loops, there is other things to do in the game, but these are the primary ones that everybody is taking advantage of at this current point in time. Two things that I really enjoy outside of these is racing and mining as well. Mining is just super relaxed. It's literally exactly what it sounds like. You find a location, you mine some rocks, you make some money off of it, and racing is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically just racing different sized ships, making both of those really enjoyable, but they're not something that everybody in the game is really striving to do at this current point in time. If there's already all of this in the game, then what is there to look forward to in the future? Well, for starters, every single year they add tons of ships and new skins that players can purchase. On top of this, there's talk of base building coming to the game as well, which is going to allow players to build on planets and have spawn locations that they will be able to mine resources from at the same time. There even is some talk that these bases are going to be able to get raided by other people, which is a pretty interesting concept. One thing that I saw when it originally released is I thought it might be something like Ark Survival Evolved, and that is a little concerning, but if they do it properly, it could be insanely fun. They're also working to add server meshing and AI updates as well in order to make servers more fluent and NPCs not so robotic in their gameplay. On top of all this, there's also talks of Squadron 42, the story mode of Star Citizen releasing at the end of the year. One thing I definitely think everybody should take note of when paying attention to this game is that it is still an alpha and has a lot of potential to still come. Overall, Star Citizen is an amazing game. I know many people say this game is a scam or they spent too much money, but people don't realize game development costs and time for one of a kind unique games, such as games like Red Dead Redemption 2 that spent three to five hundred million dollars in development over the course of eight years to become a once in a lifetime playthrough. I absolutely love Star Citizen's gameplay and graphics, although the game will definitely be 10 times better once AI and desync are fixed. Truly though, for a minimum of $40 to play and not needing a super PC, it's definitely worth it, as the likelihood of playing another game like this is very slim at least for another 15 years. With all that being said, I rate the game a 7.81 out of 10 and can't wait for updates in the future. Let me know what your favorite part of Star Citizen is in the comments below. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.